القول قول الصوارم كي تسترد المظالم حتى الأراضي نسام رسول أهل العزائم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستوفره ونعوذ بالله تعالى من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Indeed all praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and peace and blessings be upon his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the one who gathered us in a gathering that he loves a gathering where it's the remembrance of Allah that God brought us together. No other worldly matter. Rather, it is to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to invoke Him and to learn about our religion. I ask Him to gather us in a better gathering on a day when there is no shade but His shade. As to what follows, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, did the brave really cry? I mean, is it really from the attributes of the brave? Those who are not described to be cowards, is it from their attributes to cry? Well, let us go back in time, dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Let us go back in time to where the bravest of men existed. The time of the Sahaba and those who came after them. They were the bravest of men. During the day, they shook the palaces of the empress and the kings of the world. Towards their own death on the battlefield, they were racing. With no fear in their hearts. However, at night, there were people who were in solitude, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, invoking Him. At night, they were like children, crying and crying. It was the greatest fear that moved this man. But it wasn't the fear to any creature. Rather, it was the fear to the one who deserves to be feed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What made these men race on the battlefields for their own death is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the fear of the day when they will stand in front of him. It is the great, great desire to meet him with an act in which he loves. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave these brave men the most beautiful descriptions when he said, Muhammad Rasulullah Listen to this beautiful description given by the one who only praises those who deserve to be praised because he knows the inner and the outside of people. He says, Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. It is enough honor for him to be referred to as Rasulullah. Allah has chosen him from all the creation to carry on the final message of Islam. And those who are with him, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala them, they are severe against the enemies of Allah. However, they are merciful in between one another. You find them bowing and prostrating, seeking the favors and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The signs of Iman, the signs of belief are found in their faces because of their prostration. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the believers two opposing characteristics which if they are found
found in any person. They are a virtue. They are severe. They are great. They are firm in front of the enemies of Allah. No fear in their hearts. Severe. However, on the other hand, they are merciful people towards one another. They are people who bow and prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You find in their faces the sign of the believer, the sign of Qiyam, the sign of prostrating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the righteous men in another beautiful verse when he says, إِذَا تُتْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُ الرَّحْمَانِ خَرُّوا سُجَّدًا وَبُكِيًّا When the verses of Allah have been recited upon them or to them, they fell down prostrating and weeping. Do not ever think, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, do not ever think that crying is not from the attribute of men. Do not ever think that it is a sign of weakness. Yes, it is a sign of weakness and it shouldn't be done in front of the enemies of Allah because it is a sign of a coward. However, do not ever think that weeping and crying out of the great, great devotion, out of the great humbleness, out of the great fear. Do not ever think that this is a sign of weakness. Wallahi, it is a sign of strength. And only the believers are able to fulfill this. How precious and how expensive and valuable are those tears that come out of the eyes for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ubaid ibn Umayyad, he asked Aisha radiallahu anha, he said, tell me of the most amazing thing you have ever seen from the Prophet She paused and then she said, one night the Messenger of Allah asked me if he could get up to worship Allah and to pray. Surely the great respect he had towards his wives, it was her night and he asked for her permission. Aisha radiallahu anha wa Allah. She said, I love your nearness. I love to be next to you. However, I love that which you love. So the Prophet wasallam got up, he made a look, and he started to pray. And he continued to cry, and he cried, and he cried, until he wet the floor underneath. And then Bilal ibn Rabah, he came to do a land. And he found the Messenger of Allah, the one who his previous and latter sins have been forgiven. He found him crying and crying and crying. He asked, O oh, Messenger of Allah, you cry while your latter and previous sins have been forgiven. The Prophet ﷺ responded, أَفَلَا أَكُونُ عَبْدًا شَكُورًا Shall I not be a thankful slave? They are the tears of gratitude. He said, I had verses revealed to me. Woe to whoever hears them and does not reflect upon them. Woe to whoever hears them and does not contemplate them. It is the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ فِي خَلْقِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَاخْتِلَافِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ لَآيَاتٍ لَآيَاتٌ لِأُولِي الْأَلْبَابِ Verily, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of the day and night are signs for the people of understanding. How many times do we come across this verse? How many times do we hear it? And the Prophet said, Woe to whoever hears them and does not contemplate over them. How many times do we come across the words of Allah? 
How many times do we hear it and our hearts are moved for it? I'm not saying, dear brothers and sisters in Islam, that our hearts do not move. I'm not saying that we don't cry. I'm not saying that the tears do not come out of the eyes. But over what do we cry? What moves your heart? What makes you respond with great passion? What makes you move? Many people cry after having a loss, a materialistic loss. Losing their house that they shouldn't have sold. Or selling that car that was their dream car. Or losing that opportunity, that thought that they would have become successful from it. And most amazing of all, others cry after watching a movie. Others cry after hearing a song. Others cry over just simple, stupid things. But how many of us cry? How many of us reflect and ponder over the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? How many of us are moved by the words of Allah? Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu anhu wa arba. He was described by his daughter. Rajulun asyaf. A man whose heart is so soft, he cries and he cries to an extent that she was getting a messenger of Allah on him when he was dying. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked for Abu Bakr to leave the believers. She replied, O messenger of Allah, inna hu rajulun asyaf. He's a man with a soft heart and people will not be able to hear the Quran because he cries and he cries. Abu Bakr al-Siddiq radiallahu an, the one who the disbelievers tried to unite against him to stop him from reciting the Quran in his yard, added the great fear that their wives and children will be affected by the words of Allah when they hear it recited and mentioned by the one whose heart is moved by these words. But wallah, he was the bravest of men. He was the bravest of men. And look how he stood in front of those who apostated. Look how he stood like a lion with no fear in his heart. Look how he rushed towards the Prophet Uhud, racing towards him. Umar ibn Khattab, one of the only, or the only companion that left Mecca openly. He left it openly, not secretly. He did his salaf. And then he said, whoever wants his mother to lose a child, let him follow, let him follow me behind the valley. And no coward would dare challenge, challenge Umar ibn Khattab. They didn't dare to chase him behind the valley. Umar ibn Khattab, the one when the da'wah was still fresh in Mecca, the one who said, if we were 300, we wouldn't have left it for you. Look at him when he hears the words of Allah, what happens to him. It is mentioned in the books of Seah that upon hearing some verses, some verses that we may hear on a daily basis, he fell sick for one whole month. And no one could not, no one could tell what's the matter with him. No one could recognize what's the matter with Umar ibn Khattab. They are the verses where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ عَذَابَ رَبِّكَ لَوَاقِعُ مَا لَهُ مِنْ دَافِعُ Verily, the torment of Allah shall happen. Surely the torment of Allah shall come to pass. There is none who can avert it. None who can push it away. Upon hearing these words, Umar ibn Khattab said, it is a, it's a, it's a sport, an oath made by Allah, Qasam, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fulfill it. Umar ibn Khattab, the one who was known to be a very brave man, could not stand properly after hearing these verses. He fell sick for a whole month. And if I was to mention what happened to the companions when they hear the words of Allah, I will require many, many lectures and I will not be able to do just by them. Be honest with me, dear brothers and sisters in Islam.